Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have developed a new thing. It is a thing I've been pondering for quite some time and it is sort of a space bus. As you can see, it looks sort of like a bus or a van or something like that. And it has windows on the side but not in the front because it would be automated. And it has its fuel tanks at the bottom. It has a hatch at the bottom so it would dock on this side and it would probably use my pass-through system normally, but otherwise it can accommodate other docking ports. Um, well, anyway, let's say NASA docking system. Actually, the NASA docking system is smaller than the ISS hatch. Let's not talk about that. Okay, but anyway, it's got room for the docking ports, and its engines here are actually the abort motors on CST-100 with slightly larger nozzles so that they're more efficient in vacuum. Uh, so they are RS-88s. In this case, they're using MMH and MON3, which is more convenient for me. And you can see that there's RCS ports and it is otherwise powered by fuel cells. We have the hydrogen and oxygen inside. I've sized it up and uh, we've got seating for five right now, but that's because we also have sleeping berths. So they would be able to sleep inside. We have the little door in the back there. And that is for other purposes. We'll discuss that much, much later. But uh, for now, that will not be necessary. Uh, they will just be using it to go from one place to another. However, the main, the original purpose of this was me pondering Skylon and having a crew module in Skylon. Skylon normally doesn't have crew. Let's bring Skylon out. Skylon normally doesn't have crew. It has a cargo bay. And I was thinking of maybe putting a crew pod in the cargo bay. Now that's inconvenient, sort of. First of all, there are no windows. We probably have to have a hatch on there. And then that means a hatch on the top of this instead of on the back or the bottom. Unless we flip it around, but then the abort motors won't work. So that's why we have the abort motors, right? Uh, among other things, we want to be able to blow this hatch and get out of Skylon in case something bad happens. And that's why Skylon doesn't have its normal cargo bay doors because then we'd have to have two things that blow off and I didn't like that. So I just created one that would uh, be blown off. It's a decoupler. And then the pod will escape in case there's some problem with Skylon. And this pod, as you can see, is shaped for the bay, but there's other benefits. It so happens that the bay for Venture Star is not too much different from Skylon's bay. And the capacity of Venture Star is not too much different from Skylon either. I'm also thinking of developing the X-37C. The X-37B is the secret plane that they launch on Atlas V and I think once or twice, oh, I forget how many times on Falcon 9. But that's a secret one that Boeing has. But the X-37C is a scaled up version, but it still have a cargo bay there. And so you'd have to fit a crew pod in. And I'm thinking of making a version that this would be the crew pod for. And so we would use it for that as well, and other things, <laughs> and other things. So this is a multi-purpose crew pod with many benefits. Heck, we could slap some wheels on it and it could hop around on the moon. Uh, but the Del Delta V with the little tanks, if we full fill it up completely, is 2,600 meters per second, which is a lot. And so that means that with the Delta V in here, it could land on the moon. Now, I couldn't get back into orbit again from the moon, so that's a bit of a rub. But it could do the thing where it attaches to some other stage, that stage does most of the descent, and then it lands on the moon with about 400 meters per second, and then gets back into orbit with the rest. Uh, so it can do that with another stage. And there are other things we can do. Uh, for instance, if we remove the sleeping berths in the front and back, we could fill that up with fuel, and then it has a lot more capability, but also it's a lot heavier. Right now, Skylon wouldn't be able to carry it if it was fully fueled up, even with just the tanks that we have at the bottom right now. Uh, so that's why we have it underfueled. Right now, it's fueled just for abort. Skylon will take it to orbit, it's fueled for abort, and then it used its RCS to rendezvous with a space station or something like that and transfer the crew there. There are other possibilities. <laughs> uh, I've thought about this long and hard, and there are a lot of possibilities for this. But first of all, we are doing the abort test. That's what we're doing today. And I'll go through the other possibilities later. It's a little bit weird because, you know, normally you think of a capsule, right? But this thing is not supposed to independently re-enter ever. Uh, it, if we have to bring it back down into the atmosphere, it would redock with a space plane like Skylon and then be brought back down by, the, by Skylon or Venture Star or something like that. And so it's an independent 
screw pod without the heat shielding, which makes it more efficient in a way. The dry mass of this, by the way, is about 10 tons. And then the fuel is more, if it's fully fueled, it's 27 tons, which is quite a lot. But we'll see what we can do with that. For now, again, we're just doing the abort test with Skylon and seeing how that goes. Now that's a little bit complicated because we have to blow the hatch first and then get it out. And that's not one thing, otherwise it'll bump in. The hatch does have colliders and it'll bump into it and that could be bad. So we're doing it in two steps. I've got them action grouped. All right, throttle up, and we are using atmospheric autopilot. We're going to abort uh, shortly after it reaches the speed of sound. This should be fairly high dynamic pressure at that point. We could do a ground abort test, though. I feel like that's unnecessary, but maybe. We'll see. The takeoff speed of Skylon is super high. I think I need to do a video on small wings. Yeah, the Skylon sure has small wings. How small can you make wings exactly? And I'm not gonna turn off the engines, we're gonna go with it past the speed of sound. Okay, so we should be going through max Q or something like that. So, blow. Okay, well, we can turn it off. It's got more fuel than it needs for the abort, even right now. Ended up a little bit flippy. But it cleared the bay. It'll be a little bit dizzy. That's our max G's. 11.3, that's mostly from the exit. Now, it's only partially fueled. On a fully fueled situation, uh, it would not have quite as much thrust to weight ratio, so that's the thing. Well, oh, I guess it consumes some liquid hydrogen from here too. We need to reset the the fuel priority because oh, it's spinning more now. Anyway, uh, because we have fuel cells or one fuel cell. Oh, the symmetry. Didn't, uh, I took the parachutes off and put them back on again, and then it messed up the parachute symmetry. I had it symmetrical already. Okay, but it survived the abort. We do have to see whether Skylon can actually get it to orbit like this, though. And in the corner it says 524 meters per second, but here it doesn't. That's probably because of where we're controlling from. We need like a control point at the top so it's oriented for those thrusters. But I think, I would believe, about 500 meters per second is what we've got left. So plenty if we were to make a low Earth orbit rendezvous. Well, well, buoyancy in Kerbal is just weird, so let's just ignore that. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be buoyant, it's fine. Okay, here we go, throttle up, and atmospheric all pod is on. Now, it's been a long, long time since I tried to bring Skylon to orbit. Up we go. I haven't uh, finished the interior of it, otherwise we would see... We would put Kerbals in and have the Kerbal portraits and everything, but... Uh, for now, the interior is not complete. Okay, trying to accelerate here at altitude. We should try to give me some indication of the Delta V. It's a bit more mysterious than I wanted it to be. Okay, switching. A little bit early, I think. Well, it says 6,600 right now. I don't know if it's telling the truth. We'll see. No, it's using a lot of pitch. Uh oh. Is the cargo not placed particularly well? Hmm. The engines are pretty low set. 
so it looks like we have a little bit of a problem with that. The cargo center of mass is too high. Interesting. I'm going to try and just shift the engines up on the wings. Oh, maybe the wings just need some more tilt. I think when I attached the wings, I didn't tilt them the way they normally are. Let me do that. Okay, here we go again. Hopefully tilting up the wings solves the problem. And up we go. Downside of using the shuttle landing facility is of course we have to do this turn, but it's not too bad. Okay, we're a little bit lower than I was intending. All right, let's switch. Eh, the time it takes to switch is fairly decent. Well, let's keep an eye on the pitch this time. I think I've tilted them right now, but I'll have to make sure. Well, it's got to be a bit tight here. There is a catch to this. Um, I don't have an animation for the pod crew cover the crew pod cover so we do have to just blow it off when we want to decouple the crew pod from inside um, maybe I should fix that uh oh uh oh we've got control problems I guess we'll need a little bit more tilt to the engines Well, I'll coast a little bit. Nope. Well, that was a little bit high, and we probably wanted this to be able to deorbit, so that's not quite right. I was trying to shut off at 200 by 200, not this. But anyway, successful. It looks a little bit too light here. It looks properly dark down below, but anyway. Off goes that. Okay, so let me just activate this thing's RCS. We have to test that too. Okay, this way. And this is how it calmly gets out of the cargo bay instead of firing all of its engines. Still, we have no read on the Delta V though. Maybe the stock system is right. Oh, I accidentally activated the parachutes. That's one downside to this. We do have to carry the parachutes, but anyway. So, it can just be a little bus. The thrusters are only 400 Newtons. And we do have a fuel cell built in. And okay, well, it's about 15 tons, so Skylon can do nearly 15 tons to orbit right now. And that's good. But I think it's supposed to be able to do 20, but I could never get it to do 20. But uh, yes, our little Skybus. I've called it a crew pod for now, or a Skylon crew pod, but I probably need a different sort of name for it. It's different. I just still need to put textures and limited shininess on it. Right now, it's just non-metallic textures but that's the idea there we go uh sky bus should we call it sky bus anyway something like that so this is just an introduction to the system and we'll see that work in other situations with that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time